So hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Today we're going to be looking at the Retroid Pocket 2. Um, it's a relatively new handheld to the market. Um, it was released uh, sometime later last year and it's really nice. It's a little bit different to your usual handheld. Uh, it has two operating systems. Uh, primarily it runs off of Android, which is quite cool. A little bit different to the other ones. Um, and it has its own operating system where you can play games and such. But yeah, let's have a look at it and how it plays. So oh, here we have the actual box it came on, yep, made in China, and it's quite nifty. It actually comes in its own actual box. The reason it's in uh, another box is because I ordered a HDMI cable so that we could actually play the games on the TV. Now I ordered the unit from this company here, uh, Droix I think it's Good. I'll leave a link in the description and it comes in all sort of lovely colours Let's have a look at here's the actual styles and colours it actually comes in um, All of them are actually really nice, it was really difficult to actually choose one um, I sort of chose the, the sort of PlayStation style um, version but like I say it was really tough to actually choose um, the, the particular one So yeah let's open up the box and see what's inside so inside the box we've got a screen protector, I ordered that as well as the cable, which is quite cool. And um, comes in its nice little packet. And there's also your charge cable, it's just a simple USB-C charge cable. itself. Now design wise, this is what I like best about the unit, it is really nice looking. Um, see it comes in all sorts of colours, but you've got your analogue stick here, you've got a D-pad. And they've got this, this is, it looks like an analog stick, but it's more like a sort of a mouse function, if you can sort of see, it's quite flat and it just kind of moves about a little bit. And it's got your usual buttons here, and all of these are really nice actually, I quite like them. You've got your home button, select button, start button, and the speakers, which are located here, and the sound quality is excellent. And um, you've got your headphone socket down here, and you've also got the, this is the memory card slot that goes in here. Easy enough to get out but um, it's got a nice protective rubber over it. Um, also you've got on the top here you've got your volume up and down, you've got your on off switch here, you've got these lovely trigger, two trigger button or two trigger buttons and two sort of shoulder buttons and they're actually really nice. I do like them. Um, only such a small problem I found is that some of the but the games don't particularly map too well to these for some reason. Like Dreamcast, I thought would map to these, but they don't. So you you can actually change them. So it's all customizable, I guess. Um, you've got this is the um that's the charge socket, and this is this a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, which allows you to play it onto your TV, or you can sort of record your footage, which is quite cool. It's something that um is better over the the RG three five one P. So that's the actual unit. Let's maybe do a quick comparison um, to the um, RG351P. You can see size-wise they're pretty much the same. Um, the only sort of difference is, is that the size sort of extended bit is, is slightly, as you can see, it's slightly sort of longer, wider even, which I think is actually better. It actually feels better in the hand than, than the RG351P is. Um, and it's it's got a similar size screen, it's, it's a little bit longer, but the aspect ratio of this is different to the RG351P. This is a 4.3 aspect ratio, whereas the RG351P is 3.2. Um, it has a slightly better resolution screen as well, um, which is quite cool. But again, it's all about how the games play. You would think this would probably play the games better, but it's not always the case. So let's put it up and have a look uh, before we put it onto the TV. So to get started you sort of hold down the power button and it sort of boots into Android by default to start. And it does take a little bit to get started, it takes maybe around a minute or so. So it's quite slow. And I'd also recommend um, not to turn it off completely when you're finished with it. Just press the, the, the sort of home button up here, no sorry the power button and it just puts on to sleep. And it's perfectly fine like that. I would um, recommend it because it takes too long to power up. Um, Playtime is maybe roughly about 
six to eight hours, something like that, depending on what your settings are. Um, I've got an HD setting on the sort of Retroid OS, and it tends to take up a little bit more um, battery. You can see it takes a little bit of time to actually load in. So here we go. We've got the the initial Android screen. You've got usual options. You can set the time and date, usual stuff in Android. Um, and you've got access to some of the games here. That's a really good retro prime game. You've got um, emulators, apps that are work quite well. Some work better than others. Um, you've got RetroArch is also here, which is probably the best place to play the games. You can update it if you've obviously been Android. You can go into the Play Store and you actually update it, which is quite good. But I've I've experienced some issues. With some of the games and, and trying to download cores and etc so i need to look do a little bit more digging um on that which is a little bit annoying but some of the the sort of games do work better than others i found doomcast to be a little bit iffy so far which kind of surprises me i thought it'd be good um most games work well the playstation games work great n64 games work really well surprisingly arcade games and um, psp was a bit hit and miss it depends how you play them again but let's show, I'll quickly show you the Retroid OS system, which is where most of the games, this is the easiest place to go to actually play the games. So you just sort of put into that, press OK. Now later in the video I'll show you it hooked up to the TV, um, and it, it, it works really well doing that. And it's probably easier for showing the video purposes too. Again, it takes a little bit to switch between the operating systems. And I'd say this is probably the easiest place to actually play the games. And you can add your own as you see fit. Um, the only problem is I think the best way is probably through RetroArt, but it's, again, it's still hit and miss. So, this is the initial screen you see. I've already added some of my own games. And you see there's thousands of games you can just sort of scroll down. They're all sort of categorised as Mega Drive, Arcade, SNES games, etc. And it goes on and on. So there's there's tons. If you use the shoulder buttons here, you can go through categories. If you push down a bit, you can go through the actual type of games that they are. And there's tons and tons of games already preloaded. Which is quite cool. And most of them work well, but I think the usual sticking points are like PSP. Um, Dreamcast was a bit all over the place, which kind of surprises me a little bit. Um, you can see, and um, there's actually an option to go into the actual store, which I'll show you later on in the video. We'll maybe have a quick look at one of the games before we kick it on to, um, kick it on to the TV. One thing that's actually quite good about it is that the sound quality is really, really good. It's not touch screen, obviously. I'll turn the, the sound way up just to give you an idea. You hear the sound quality is. I can hardly even hear myself. So that's one of the most impressive things about it. So this is. For two. One of the issues I found is maybe the sort of button mappings might be a bit all over the place. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. But generally the games do play really well. It plays a lot of the usual ones quite well. I think you'd, if you want to get the most out of it, you're going to have to spend a lot of time on it. It's not very user friendly, so if you want to play all these different systems like Amiga, um, C64 and maybe some others, you're going to have to spend a lot of time tinkering with it and it, it, it's something that I've really not enjoyed doing recently because the RG351P was the same but it was a lot easier to, to use. This one just doesn't seem to be responding great to tinkering. It seems to be coming across more problems than anything. But anyway, let's, let's maybe have another look at another game. So you can quietly go back to the menu here. And choose something else. So this is a Dreamcast title working. Like I say, some time some titles do work better than others. Okay, it's just hit and miss um, in which operating system you choose to run them. 
See this title actually runs particularly well. I do like the design of the unit, I think it looks really nice and it feels good in the hand. Let's uh, quickly get started. You see this one, this one is particularly good, it doesn't actually have any issues, no slowdown. And it, and it works brilliant, but it's not the same for every Dreamcast game, or PSP game, for example. It's, it's a bit hit and miss. And graphically, it looks really nice, the resolution's good, and it, you can start the speed and pace of the game's going is, is terrific. I, mean, I think we could probably tweak these games further and get them to look even better and play quicker. Especially the ones that give us issues. Not particularly great at this game. But anyway, let's have a look at the game connected to the TV. Okay guys, when you first boot up the Retroid Pocket, um, you go straight to the analog Android operating system. Um, which is a little bit slow. Um, it's, it's basically how most Android looks, I guess, but it's a slower um, operating system, 6.0. Now, you can update this. Um, it's not so straightforward right enough to do. I uh, may look at this in a later video. So, you've got loads of settings and things you can change. Um, but you can then jump to where you'll probably most likely want to go straight away is to play the games in Retroid. So, this switches to another operating system which is probably the easiest way to play the games. Not the best way to play the games, but the easiest. Um, you can use any of the other um, emulator apps that are here, and they're all pretty decent. Some work better than others. Um, like For instance, Flycast just isn't great because you need to be in the mouse option. So it defaults to gamepad mode. Uh, you need to sort of switch between mouse, touch indicator, and it, it the, the flycast doesn't work unless you're in the mouse, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but I haven't had a lot of joy with flycast, so I haven't really looked at that. That's for Dreamcast games. Um, you can also play PSP games through the different apps, which is fine. You have a little bit more options through here in, in sort of settings to play games, like for instance, um, frame skipping. Like I totally recommend playing. Um, the PSP games through this rather than retro operating system, which I'll show you right now. Let's have a look at playing Ridge Racer. Now, through this way, or even doing it through RetroArch, you can ha choose the option of frame skipping, which definitely improves things massively. If you play through the Retroid operating system, it's horrible and slow. So, we'll see. So this is one of the frustrating things about this handheld, is it's not the most straightforward to use. It's, everything's not perfect. If you're just wanting something out of the box to play, I don't recommend this at all. But if you like tinkering and trying to get things as best as they possibly can, then why not? Give it a go. There's definitely a lot a lot of work involved to getting things looking and playing great though. See each of the different titles that can play N64, PSP, Dreamcast, PlayStation, some it plays better than others, plays PlayStation brilliantly. It even plays Nintendo 64 really well, which we'll show you soon. PSP is a little of a, a mixed bag as is Dreamcast. So let's quickly see if we can just jump straight in. The main menus are zippy enough. I can feel that this race is gonna be um, but putting the frame skip to one makes a massive difference to the speed here. Um, so let, let's maybe do a quick lap to give you an idea of the difference. It makes the game far more playable than through the Retroid operating system. So we'll do a quick lap and then I'll show you the difference. And this is actually quite a decent version of um, Ridge Racer. 
Okay, I guess if you played one red tracer, you played them all. Whoa. <laughs> a little bit of in there. Takes a little bit of getting used to. It's all about and then pressing it quickly again as you turn. See, slowdown's not bad. Especially when you sort of see the the um, airplane overhead. But there's not too much slowdown, it's pretty decent. And certainly makes the game very, very playable. Not lost any of my skills. Did enjoy this game back in the day. Yeah, it's one of those games that's actually quite tricky to master. But, I mean, you get the idea, it actually plays quite well through the actual PSP app. Um, but yeah, let's maybe jump onto the Retroid operating system to give you an idea of the differences that you, you will encounter. Woohoo! So you press the home button, you quickly just jump out of there, so that, that's quite cool. Um, okay, so you've got Retroid Arc here, you can, which is updated to the, the latest version. Um, and obviously you've got Play Store where you can set your account up and download some games and stuff, which is really cool. But the fact it's the uh, operating system 6.0 means you can't play every game. So you, ideally you need to update this to the latest version, which isn't straightforward. Hopefully I'll maybe explore that in a later video. You've got Steam Link, which sounds cool, but I'm not sure how well it works. See, Nintendo 64 games work really well on this too. Dreamcast a little hit and miss, but let's show you. We just where the main sort of games and where you play m most of your games, I guess, through the Retroid operating system. How to go between the systems, um, so be aware of that. I'd also recommend not turning the system completely off because it takes forever to reboot. You can just press the start button and it'll go into sleep mode, um, which is fine. It doesn't really drain the battery. Battery life's not too bad. Getting, at least getting maybe five or six hours. I'm not really sure it's, it's got getting much more than that to be extensive play. So, Retroid Pocket Operating System. I've got some new games that I've downloaded here. And it just basically lists through them all that we've got. And there's a, a good few thousand games already installed. Um, you can press the shoulder buttons to go through the different categories at the top. And if you go to the actual category, you can push down and then use the D-pad to go between the different styles of games. From your arcade to um, PC Engine, you've got Mega Drive, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, NES games, Nintendo 64 games, which play surprisingly well. PlayStation games which play brilliantly, absolutely no problem with that at all. PSP games, hit and miss. Let's show you the difference between playing Ridge Racer 2 on this as opposed to the actual app that's in the Android store. So let's have a look. It's massively different. See that uh, unfortunately through the Retroid operating system there's very little you can do to change um, the sort of options in the game, there's no options to frame skip or improving anything at all, so you're kind of a stuck to what you have. There is an HD graphics mode which, I don't know, seems to make the graphics look nicer, which is fine. But other than that, you're totally limited. So the screens are fine, they zip along nice enough, it's when you get to the actual game where things slow down. The button map is different as well. I don't understand. I find the button mapping on the, the, the handheld is all over the place, which is kind of a frustrating. You can see we now have massive slowdown. And practically this game is now unplayable. Two, one, go! 
as you can see, it's going to crawl. Just, it was just frustrating. You can clearly see that there's too many options on this to you know, choose which is the best way to play these games. You know, just give us the best. Don't give us all these options, and some are useless. Well, you can see this is just. <laughs> it might make the game easier to play, but it's it's horrible to play it like this. It's choppy. It's it's all over the place. What a shame, but yeah, at least on the actual handheld there is ways to play the game better. But I just don't understand why you would include this. Or not even include an option to make it play better within the actual Retroid app operating system itself. Bonkers. Anyway, you get the gist, it's terrible. Terrible. So you press the home button, you can exit the game. You can access your save states, load states here as well. Um, and like I say, if you go to the settings, look. The actual settings and the games show scan lines disabled, enabled, disabled. That's it. That's all you get. Absolutely hopeless. So, oops. So if you exit to the main menu, as you can see down the bottom right, you have some options. Um, of we've just seen the game setting. If you've got hold home button, you can see the actual settings that you can actually change. So you get handheld settings. Not really a lot to choose from. None of these really make a massive amount of difference. Um, again, you need to press the Y button to cancel here. Crazy. Not the B button. Key settings. Again, really not a heck of a lot of point in getting here to do anything. Game settings. So this is where you can change the image optimization, which I've done. It says it drains the battery quite a lot. May well do, but it got the HD mode and then the standard and other things that really don't make a heck of a lot of difference um, you can change your game list here now if you are loading your own games this is where you would come to um, manage your own games so any games that appear in here you can then allocate them to whichever they are they don't automatically come as a Mega Drive game, you have to actually allocate it to that so that it will appear in the menus which is fine, you can sort of mess about with that, just be careful so we'll go back, and that's that's basically that, it's pretty straightforward, there's not a heck of a lot to look at here um, again you can switch to the other system which we've already seen um, enter user wizard So this really is what you see when you start out, you can choose your language, instructions give you an idea of the layouts and it gives you some shortcuts and stuff which is kind of quite cool um, and that's nice but uh, something that's maybe a bit controversial here is you've got your actual game market where you can enter and you can actually download games from um, this store which is probably a wee bit controversial. You can download any games. There's arcade games and this will download straight to your device. And there's plenty to choose from here. Um, some of the, the naming is a little bit strange but there's lots to choose here. I'd say a lot of the games are a bit hit and miss how they play so you need to be aware of that. Let's maybe have a look at some of them in action. So let's just go back out of here. So let's have a look, quite a look at a PlayStation game. Which, PlayStation games, absolutely no problem. Play terrific. It does appear that PlayStation must be a fairly easy system to emulate. I don't think I've seen any system play PlayStation games badly. Let's see, there's no slowdown. Absolutely perfect. Graphics look okay as well. Button map is generally okay, but sometimes in some other games it just doesn't seem to work. And that's that. So yeah, that plays quite nice. I like how quickly though the games do sort of jump out the system, which is good. Um, like I say, some of the games are hit and miss. Let's have a look at Super Mario 64. Which plays surprisingly good. It 
really depends what you're looking for in your handheld. If um, you're just wanting to play PlayStation games, then by all means this is perfect. But I think there's some other handhelds play games better than this overall. Like the the RG351P by Anne Burnett is probably a better system overall. This actually looks okay. A lot of systems are struggling to play this recently. Again, maybe this is where some of the button uh, mapping becomes a bit of a problem. Some strange ones. See, it sounds fine, looks okay. <laughs> looks okay. Some of the graphics that are online there look a little bit iffy, but some of these games do actually play better through retro art rather than through this method, but in general this is actually alright, there's very little slowdown, there's not a lot of flickering or anything going on. So yeah, ain't bad at all. Yeah, well, let's move on. So let's have a look at um, Dreamcast. So most games play quite well, but let's have a look at Dreamcast. And I'll give you an idea of the issues that you get to face that Dreamcast generally plays better through retro art rather than this, but I still couldn't get it to be perfect through retro art either. It needs a lot of tinkering, so if you've got time and you can spare, and you don't mind, then I guess it'd be fine. But this is, is I found it quite frustrating so far. Welcome back to the stage of history. So, I guess, so you can see through. Th this is uh, a lot of flickering on the main screen, and this does continue through the levels, which are kind of a off putting. Slowdown's not so bad, but the flickering is massively off putting. I'm trying to play this through Retro Art, none of the changes I was doing was making any difference. You see, it tends to play alright, there's no massive issues, a little bit of slowdown, but it's not bad, but that flickering is pretty annoying. I need to probably do a little bit of investigation in trying to understand it, how to fix it, but so far it is quite annoying. Especially when I've seen the RG351P plays Dreamcast games perfectly. There's no slowdown and there's no flickering either. Yeah, but again, it plays okay. I mean, if you don't mind the flickering, it actually plays alright. So let's have a look at more. So I'm maybe going to have a look at um, an arcade game, which is notorious for slowdown on some slower systems. So let's have a look at it. So this game, Ninja Baseball <laughs> Batman, uh, an arcade game which is notorious for quite, quite a lot of slowdown in some systems, but on here it actually plays really well. Like I said, the, the whole system Total has not hit and miss and how well it plays different things. Which is kind of frustrating because it's clearly quite a capable little handheld. See, quite a quirky little game. But it plays really decently on here, there's very little slowdown. Um, and it looks really nice too. Which is pleasantly surprising, I think, considering there's, there's a lot of issues with some other games. So very hit and miss for me, it's not the full package and it, it's going to take a lot of work to get it to be half decent in some things. And it's kind of a frustrating, I've found it to be very frustrating so far. Not user friendly at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Kind of a quite a quirky cool game. <laughs> But yeah, there's definitely one you should play. That's it's already installed in, in the sub machine, which is cool. Not a massively well-known title, but it's, it's nice. Quite quite good fun. So guys, my overall impressions with this is it's a really nice machine. Design is good, but it's it takes a lot of time and effort to actually get anywhere with it, and it. I'm not really sure I want to put the time into it. I'm not sure it's going to be rewarded. But um, it apparently plays a lot of the same things that the RG351P plays, um, which is this one. Um, but I don't know. I, th I think it's a lot more harder work to get anywhere with it. Um, so it's really up to you if you want to spend the time trying to get the most out of this machine, um, by all means. But I wouldn't recommend it over the RG351P. Even though I do prefer the style of it, I prefer the shoulder buttons, it's just hard, hard work to get anywhere. Um, apparently it's capable of playing a lot of games, the same sort of Amiga, and it does play Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, PSP, you know, anything you can think of. But it's a bit hit and miss with the game, the game, um, and it's, it's just, I'm not sure it's worth the effort, but it's a decent, decent enough, and it's decent enough to add if you're a collector, then it is, it's a nice little machine, it comes in a lot of colours. See, I'll leave a link in the description where I got it from, um, and let you make up your own mind. But yeah, it's, it's nice enough, but it is what it is. It's not perfect. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Pretty much sums it up perfectly, doesn't it? It plays sluggish in some things, but again, if you want to maybe spend more time in it, you could probably get it to play better, maybe through RetroArch. Definitely maybe have some follow-up videos here, um, if I can try and get it improved, or even get a custom firmware on it. We'll see. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Bye for now.